So this is one of the easier challenge modes, but I guess a tutorial is still needed. So the first step is, as always, to read the skills. Although it would be helpful if the skill weren't translated incorrectly. But basically, the boss starts with spinny shields, and you have to hit the spinny shield 70 times with horizontal shells, which are usually vanguard shells. And battleship uh, salvos and torpedoes, and also airstrikes and large cruiser guns don't count towards those shields. They just shoot over the shield, or under, I guess. So hit them 70 times, and then the shield breaks, and sh the boss goes into darkness mode. And during darkness mode, she does more damage, that's whatever. And during darkness mode, after you deal 30% of the boss's max HP and damage during darkness mode, she switches back to light mode and regains the shields, the 70 blocking shields. So during light mode, the boss heals 1% HP per second, which is a huge amount. Since boss has 4.6 million HP, she heals 46,000 HP per second. And she resists damage while in light mode, so you're only doing one-fifth damage to her. So it's completely impo impossible to out-damage the heal. And the rest is not important. So basically you want to break the shield as quickly as possible, which means using destroyer guns and light cruiser guns. They fire more shells per second, so you go to wiki, and then max rarity or max enhanced, doesn't matter. And then sort by rounds per second here. So light cruiser guns, the Seattle gun has uh, fire six shots and has a pretty fast reload, so it has the most rounds per second, that's good a gun. And usually ply gun is has great damage, but it's got lower rounds per second. And you want to break the shield as soon as possible so that the boss doesn't heal too much. Because you only have 10 minutes to DPS the boss, down to zero. And same with destroy guns, destroy guns shoot faster and more rounds per second, so rainbow gun is the best. Uh, followed by these random guns. I would I would use the 130, these two 130, 130 millimeters over the over this gold twin 100 and this twin 114 because the rounds per second loss isn't too much and these two have way higher range like 70 and 65 targeting range and the boss tends to sometimes it tends to sit on the right side of the screen so 50 range might have some periods where it's not shooting at all Uh, let me draw a picture. Let's say that uh, I'll get a graph. And then x axis is time. And you get 10 minutes, right? The battle lasts for 10 minutes, up to 10 minutes. And then. Let's say that y axis is percent boss HP left. So obviously, boss starts at 100 and she stays at 100 because she's constantly healing until you break the shield. So then, once you break the shield, you can damage her like this. Well, more squiggly, but you get the idea. And then, when she reaches 70, She gains the shields again, and while she has the shields, she's healing at a very fast rate, like that. So you want to break the shield as quickly as possible, and start damaging again. 
so like if this is 70 and let's say like you took 10 seconds to break the shield so she healed up to 80 then that means that this is 50 so at 50 she regains the shields and then starts healing quickly and same idea you break the shield as quickly as possible so that you can continue damaging and then it goes like that so there is one key observation and that is that this height plus this height hold on, plus this height that's how much the boss healed in addition and since she goes down by 30 every time uh, she went down by uh, she went down by 30 over here and then plus 30 that's 60 and then plus 90 over here and then this is 120 so she went down by 120 but she healed by the green amount and you have this is 120 so you have 20 percent of her HP as a buffer zone if the sum of your three green lines that's how much she healed if it's 20 percent or more then then if it's 20 percent or more when you reach when you get to here when you get close to killing the boss she gets the shield for a fourth time like that and then it might put you over time so like you should try to uh, during these three shield phases like one two three you should try to keep them within like seven seconds each and preferably six seconds so that doesn't really change the fleet building uh, I used this fleet on like zero tech to get 932 it was really close and like battleships just feel bad to use because they miss all the time unless you have miss mark so for pellet spam Plymouth is decent actually she's good because she has three main gun mounts so this gun times three and she also has like uh, a lot of salt with a lot of hits in it a lot of shells and she also has every 10 seconds an aimed barrage so all of this barrage will hit the shield if the shield is up so Plymouth is good as well as having like great damage and the battleship buff for the flag and Harbin is also great because she has two destroyer main guns and uh, she has some barrages as well that are aimed at the boss I'm not going to read the skills and then Amden was just there to buff these two battleships so other choices I mean other good choices include Uh, destroyers with high gun mounts like the Chinese missile destroyers and I guess Yudachi kind of and Lafay 2 is not really a lot of pellets but she has other buffs for if you're using carriers and then I guess Kitakaze if she's still relevant for some reason So Tashkent has an all-out assault with 60 pellets in it and you know the shield has 70 it can block 70 shots so if all of Tashkent's all-out assault hits the shield then it's basically it goes down and you give her this gun and if you give her this gun then she fires the all-out assault like every four seconds 
So you're basically guaranteed to break the shield within 4 seconds if you use Tashkan and if all of the shells hit, which they won't on auto. But if you manual, Tashkan is the absolute best and she can solo the shield completely, only on manual because you have to aim, aim her in front of the boss. Uh, I'm playing auto so I'll take like destroyers. Uh, since I'm using Harbin, I should use Chan Chun instead of An Shan for better buff. And for the light cruiser side, uh, as we said, Plymouth is good. Helena is also good because she has two light cruiser guns and one destroyer gun. And she helps with the damage, of course. And San Diego is okay with two destroyer guns and a lot of stars in her barrage. Scylla has an extremely often a frequent all-out assault and also other barrages that uh, may or may not hit the boss like Tashkens. So on auto, I'm not sure about using Scylla over like the destroyers, the gun destroyers. And that's like about it. You can just check your own ships and see what you have. Uh, I'm going to set tech to zero again, but just battleship and carriers. So offensive tech to zero, carriers also. And I'm too lazy to change the vanguard tech. There is way too much vanguard tech to change. And then I don't like this main fleet because they keep missing the boss. The boss is actually quite fast and battleships just miss. So despite having zero tech, I need to have some rainbows in it in the fleet. So on the battleship side, obviously any of the rainbow battleships are good except for Warspite. So just, just pick rainbow battleships and then Duke buffs rainbows very well, but unless you have like Bismarck, the boss will just zoom around and any battleships will miss. So uh, I would prefer to use like Implacable or August to freeze the boss. And on the carrier side, of course, you need Implacable or August, and then just put rainbow damage carriers for the rest. Or Enterprise. So I, I picked FDG and Ulrich because they're the they're two of the weakest Rainbow BBs except for Warspite. Uh, so obviously Bismarck and Musashi and Vanguard are the top ones. And then New Jersey, Orish, and Friedrich are bottom. So uh, I can continue with this to not be overpowered. But this time I want to use a freezer like August. And then by pure coincidence, my half of my fleet is now Iron Blood. So. I might as well put Emden back. Although Emden only buffs firepower, so she doesn't buff August. I think. I mean, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'll deal with the gear later and talk about submarines now. So, usually, Tempesta sailing frigates suck, but for this battle specifically, their cannon balls help break the shield faster. So going back to this chart, 
uh, let's say you don't want to summon subs at the beginning of the battle because at the beginning of the battle the boss is at 100% HP anyways it doesn't matter if the boss heals for too long so you want to summon subs like around here before the boss puts up the shield so that they have time to get into the battle and start firing and they stay in the battle for one minute anyway so it's really hard to mistime this just summon them early or you can summon them here or here and I would recommend summoning them in the first one if you're confident that you're going to win but if you have survivability issues on your vanguard then you should summon them at number three because the boss does more damage the lower HP she is so if you summon them early like at one or two then the boss has lower HP throughout the battle like like this which means that your ships are taking slightly more damage it's very slight but it's something so summoning subs at number three will delay that HP loss by a bit so anyways Tempesta ships are good and there are three of them so Royal Fortune, Mary Celeste, and Waida but mine are low level I'm not going to use them so I only put Royal Fortune and then for the other ones just fill them with good summaries now let's talk about gear I already talked about the vanguard guns so like Seattle gun is good and I actually will recommend Seattle gun over Plymouth gun unless the Plymouth gun is plus 13 for actual Plymouth because this is just way too much damage to give up but Seattle gun breaks the shield faster and breaking the shield faster if you break the shield one second faster then the boss has 46,000 less HP so that's good and for the rest I just put either rainbow or 130 uh, this 130 is from PR5 which Carbon and Plymouth are from anyway so you should have some if you're using these ships but if you don't have the Chinese 130 there is the Russian 130 from events it's from events and as of today it is also in core shop here but it costs 800 core data and it's not better than the Chinese one by much so I don't think it's worth buying for anyone like at all so back to gear uh, the, the vanguard ship in the back that's Harbin in this case doesn't need survivability at all because this position in this battle specifically takes like no damage while the first two ships take uh, a lot more damage so yeah, Plymouth can Plymouth with an oath can survive for like nine minutes with this setup. Although that was with M then shooting her instead of Chanchun doing nothing. So for this time, I want to put I want to put the actual best auxiliary setup, which is washing machine and toolkit. And now for main fleet guns, so UVH can take like any gun on her own. She doesn't care about sync, but I want to sync FDG with August. So to do that, I need a calculator. So this calculator is kind of wrong, but I mean, especially it's imp especially imprecise for challenge mode. 
which are long battles, but I know how to work around it. So FDG is selected here. This is like a crash course on using this calculator and I'll put the links in the description if I remember. So select FDG and the reload should fill in automatically for level 125. If it's not 125 then fill it in yourself. If it's oath then click the check button and then this will change by itself. Just make sure that this this number here, base reload stat, is the same as your white number. White. And bonus reload from Fleet Tech and Cats. So it's actually from Fleet Tech and Gear and Cats. So gear is the green number. Here I have plus zero. So leave it as zero. And yellow, I mean tech is the yellow number. If you click this toggle, then you can see yellow number here. Mine is also zero. So I leave this at zero. And my cat also has zero reload for battleships. So this is just zero. And this is this will only affect the main gun's first cooldown. It won't affect the actual cooldown of the of the gun. And I want to keep this off because carriers don't get that same thing. And August will be too slow if I give FDG one of these. And now. The annoying part. I mean, one of the annoying parts. FDG has alternating skill. So first she starts with 0% reload, and then on the next level she has plus 50% reload. And there's no way to do that in this calculator, so I need to. Uh, I refreshed on accident, but I need to duplicate it and choose this again. So FDG and Oath and zero bonus reload. So alternating between these two, on one salvo she has 50%, yeah, like that. And on the other she has zero. And then this just ignore it, and this also ignore. And this also ignore, I don't have any of these skills. So I just set I set the ship and then I check the oath button and then I put 50% reload over here for FDG's even for FDG's even salvos. And now conveniently this gun is already selected, which is the gun I'm going to use. So do not change this number at all unless your gun is like less than plus 10. But if it's less than plus 10, then don't bother trying to calculate sinks because it's not useful. So this gun, you, know, you press this button to refresh the calculation in case it didn't refresh. So now I can see that it's 20.85 on half the salvos and 18.21 on half the salvos. And I want August to be around that average. But there is one small problem now, and it is that um, this calculator adds 0 0.1 seconds to all of the main gun cooldowns and all of the airstrike cooldowns as well. 0 0.1 seconds, but that's not actually correct. So this is 20.85 and my game will say 20.75 or 7.4, 7.5. But it's actually, for battleship guns, you actually need to add about 1.2 seconds. So this should actually be 20.95 and this should be 18.31. So 18.31 plus 20.95, and then divided by 2, that's 19.63. So I want August to reload at around 19.63. So let's get started here. August is not Oath. 
So just 121, and I have zero gear and zero attack reload, so keep it at zero. And also zero from cats. August has 12% uh, reload. 12% reload for using Iron Blood Plane, which you should be doing. And Timing Adjustment Ox is, if you're using one of these, you should choose it. Like, obviously. So I want to choose the planes first and then see what needs to be changed to get her closer to 19.63. And this boss is medium. Medium armor, so BF 109G. And Tenrite. I mean, Sky Raider is better, but it's way too slow. I know it's way too slow for 19.63. And then I need, like, Sayun to be fast. Usually you can use Drew 87D4 for the Iron Blood requirement. So now it's 22.64, which is nowhere close. Now for airstrikes, however, uh, if I. The air, I mean, the calculator adds 0 0.1, so the base is actually 22.54. And for carriers, you're supposed to add 0. I mean, you're not supposed to add, but you're supposed to round up. Round up to the next 130th of a second. So if it's 22.54, then it should kind of round up to 22.57. Twenty-two point five seven. The rounding doesn't work perfectly because, like, sometimes one frame is fast, sometimes another frame is slow. But in general, it's kind of close to. It's going to be kind of close to twenty-two point five seven. And I want that to be nineteen point six three, so it's not even close. So put beacon, and then twenty-one point seven four. It's still quite slow. So maybe I need like to grief my damage by getting rid of Tenrai and using Suicide 12A and it's still too slow so this is where I give up and then I go looking for either I increase this carrier tech reload tech or I put a cat with reload so like I know that I have a 20 carrier reload cat and this is too fast now. Too slow. Tenrai is too slow. And 12A is too fast. How about just suicide? 19.69 is pretty close. 19.59 is 19.59 rounded up to 19.6, which is like basically perfect actually. So I want to use these three planes with beacon and with a cat that gives 20 reload and I'm using one cat only to nerf my cats here let me find a 20 reload cat for carriers mm. I'll put a purple actually here this one has 20 reload for cats. And let's put the gear on and start the battle and hopefully things work. I think the boss launches a lot of planes actually and August might just get revealed. Can I put plus 10? No, oh, I want plus 13 because this is a good plane to plus 13 anyways. And I need normal Suisue, which is this thing. And Sayun is also good to plus 13. I need a beacon here. And checking the reload here isn't very useful because it doesn't account for her skill or the cat. And I think everything is in order now. Except the anti-air guns. So since I'm using a carrier, I want, kind of want the carrier to stay concealed so that she does more damage. And the boss does launch planes occasionally 
I mean frequently. So these twin 134s are here for firepower, 15 firepower, which is more damage for the vanguard, but I want to use actual AA guns to to shoot the planes down so that Akas does more damage. And I'm going to try to avoid using plus 13 guns, but like, I'll just put 3 Roombas. Because Roombas have high range, and high range is great for consistency in shooting down scattered planes. Right. So, 3 Roombas with 2 Stags. Stags have lower range, but they reload fast and give the battleships hit, which is way more important than keeping August concealed. Hopefully this is enough to keep her concealed anyways. So let's get started. And the boss previously healed from 70 to 75% HP, so 75 minus 30 is 45%. So at 45%, the shield goes up. Shield goes up at 438 time remaining. And ended at 431, she healed from 45% to 51%, so the next shield will go up at 21%. And if you don't want to keep track of the math, you can just summon the submarines like before 70%. And it seems that as I calculated, August is slightly faster than FDG on average. So FDG is getting less of the benefit from the freeze now. So let's talk about the boss shield. So supposedly the boss has 5 spinning shields that can block 70 shots each, but in reality we need way fewer than 350 shots to break it. But I think we need more than 70 shots. So like what's happening? I suspect that each of the shields has a separate counter for 70 hits, and if you break 70 on one of them, then all of the others break as well. But I'm not sure if that's actually true without looking at the code. But I, it just feels like 70 shots isn't enough to break it. So speaking of code, so this is the thingy. 
uh, here. So like it's it spawns five different shields, and each of the shields are rotated differently, and each of them has count equals seventy. But I didn't look at I didn't look at it to see whether these seventy are independent to each other, each of the shields. But basically, as soon as one of them breaks, I don't know if like they count towards the same seventy or not, but. As soon as one of them breaks uh, here on shield broken, shield up, I think. When shield breaks, then it consumes the buff, consumes this buff that spawned the shields. So, like, supposedly when one shield breaks, all of the shields are broken as well. And then the boss continues to the next phase. And it's not relevant to fleet building, though. You still build fleets for high shell count. Before the boss reaches 21% HP, I want to get some submarines. She healed up to 29, so she healed 8 times, which is like actually worse than when I didn't have Royal Fortune. Sometimes there's just unlucky. And now I probably don't have enough DPS to finish the battle in 10 minutes. Uh, I'll just finish this and see the damage distribution and then for the next time, the next try, I'm going to slow down August a bit. And also Harbin died, so give Harbin one survivability ox.
And FDG's damage is kind of disappointing considering that she's getting buffed by 18% by Plymouth. So UVH actually does more, which is expected on a boss. So changes include survivability for Harbin. Coldburn is the best best one. It's half of half survival and half offense, so it's like 38 to reload for free for taking a 550 a 550 HP. But toolkit would be a better survivability ox because the battle lasts about 10 minutes. I mean, 10 minutes if you're slow, maybe five minutes if you're really fast and have a good account. And the rest was fine except for the anti-air guns. I actually think that it is possible to have the anti-air guns shoot down enemy planes. Mm. So August was at 19.6 but I want her to be slower, like 19.7 because what I didn't consider is that UVH can block FTG from firing, which delays FTG's reload. So when a battleship fires, she blocks all of their battleships from firing for 1. 1. 1.2 seconds, I guess, like 1.23, 1.26 seconds. And so basically, if UVH reloads right before FTG does, and UVH fires, then FTG's reload will get delayed by up to a second. So for August I want like 19.7 maybe. And getting rid of the BF109G is not an odd idea because this thing does very good damage to medium. But if I put a fighter here then it will help with the anti-air. I mean, a fighter, that's not a rocket fighter. So for example, Sea Hornet is... No, Sea Hornet is just as fast as BF109G. So don't change these numbers unless your plane is less than plus 10 or if your plane is not on here. Like, for the type numbers, the Firefly 1771 NAS isn't on here. So then you have to go like. Mm. And you don't look at this number here, 10.27, that's wrong. You have to unequip. And wait for the LTD to load, or wait for the secretary. And then you have to go to the de depot and look at it there. This is 10.8 or you can look on the wiki and wiki will say 10.8 as well. So then like you put other or like anything actually just put other and then type in the actual plane and then press calculate. But I'm not actually going to use it. Probably not. Let's put it back to we say. So Sea Hornet is actually slower than BF109G, which is yeah, that's what I want actually. I want the reload to be slower, but that's only by one frame. I want it to be slower by like three frames, 0 0.1 second. If I got rid of Sea Hornet, then I need another Iron Blood plane. So Ju 
87d4 is iron blood plane and now it's too slow so maybe sweet sway 12a this is 19.68 which rounds up to 19.7 which is exactly what i want i mean what i want this time hopefully it works So like that. I'm actually in also inclined to just put some plus 13s. Because uh, Harbin has the strongest AA, so I'll put the plus 13 on her. I have more actually, but Roomba is worth plus 13ing because it's a good get good AA gun that does anti air damage. So hopefully with this, August can stay concealed for most of her strikes and deal with more damage for herself. And since she's slower now, she should be able to buff FDG better. Actually, that like just buffing FDG correctly won't make a 10% difference on the boss. So I need like I need some better damage somewhere. For example, magically getting some tech. Or Mm. Or magically getting some gold plates for plus 13. And some more magic, like. Like this. And even more magic. Oh look, I just found 120 gold plates. And also this, but don't do this on your own. This is not worth plus 13. And I guess might as well put some more. Okay. Now let's see if this is good enough. Well, actually, all that anti air was kind of useless because all it takes is one plane leak, and then August is revealed for the next strike. So, I want actual damage here, BF 109G. Uh, back to BF 109G, and then now she might be fast, just slightly fast. If I take Sayun here and this is too slow. Or if I decrease the carrier reload to 14, this is too fast. So I do, I do have a cat with 14 reload.
that the timing doesn't really work. So how about eight? This is 19.79, round up to 19.8. And 19.8 is kind of slow. Although I can just hope that UVH blocks FDG by a lot more. And it's okay if August is slower than FDG because FDG, I mean, Battleship's first volley of each salvo has that their natural bullet time time slow. So only for the second and third salvo, I mean, second and third volley, I want August to freeze. So let me try that. Find a cat with eight carrier reload. Just this one then. So it has flames aggression and two battleship. Oh, this is not good. So this would give FDG six reload and make her too fast. So time to find another one. This one has more than eight reload. And this one would work, but it's it doesn't have flame. Let me try this, 12 reload. So, 12 reload would be 19.66 to 19.63, too fast. So let me just give up and put zero. And put a battleship cap. So now that it's down to zero, this is definitely too slow, but I can get some tech. Was it like nine? Nineteen point seven. Nineteen point seven seven. Maybe just a bit faster. So like ten. Nineteen point seven to nineteen point seven three. Uh, 10 carrier reload. And then I just give up on reload. I mean, carrier. I mean, anti air concealment. So put these back to firepower, anti air guns. So that they deal more damage. And Harbin could use some more survivability over this middle slot. And for more damage, might as well put plus 13 missile. And hopefully this time it works. Oh, so I made a mistake and forgot to add the Sayu. So wasted a bunch of time. And for summaries, actually, I think everything's fine. Except for this. Yeah, 
And Royal Fortune actually doesn't die in this battle, so I can put offensive gear like round shot. So another 9.30 about. And as usual, FDG is quite disappointing. Even with AVP buffing her, she... Even with AVP and Plymouth helping her, she like almost did less than UVH. Okay, so I used one cat and... Zero main fleet tech except for the 10 carrier reload. And I did have to use Max. I mean, Max for me. Vanguard tech. And quite a few plus 13s, but. This is extreme challenge. 
and hard is kind of hard still so if you don't beat the dps check then just like you can try manually with tashkent of course tashkent with the blue 76 millimeters tashkent muse also does the same thing so good luck and have fun